Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk all about autumn wardrobe essentials that I think are worth investing in. I've got seven key pieces here that I'm going to run through. I'm going to quickly jump into it and start with the first one, which is a really classic trench coat. Now I've got two that I'm going to show you guys here, both slightly different price points, but I really think that this is a great outerwear piece to have. It's one of those items that tends to show up again and again on those classic wardrobe lists. While I don't think you need to adhere to those 100% and it is all about finding the right thing for your style, I think a lightweight jacket in general is a good thing to have as soon as it starts to get chilly. So the first one I thought I'd show you guys is this one here from Everlane. I've had this for a few years now and this is actually the second iteration that they put out, not the first one. And I like the fact that it's kind of got a very languid sort of a uh, silhouette to it. So it's not overly structured. I would love to get a Burberry one at some point, but this one to me is really nice and relaxed and it just feels very casual and it really suits my uh, personal style and it's something that I really love throwing over a lot of my outfits. It feels very Parisian, very chic, and I think it just finishes off an entire look. The second trench I want to show you guys is not a beige trench and it's actually one that was on the slightly higher end of the price spectrum. However, I managed to find it pre-loved a couple years ago. It's this navy one from Karen Walker and I would say this isn't really your typical trench coat silhouette. It's a lot more structured than the Everlane one and it's got these really cool zipper details, the gold buttons, but also it's a cropped length. So this comes up to about hip length on me whereas the Everlane one is about knee length. So you can definitely kind of find the right sort of lightweight jacket that suits your personal style. I love both of these and I think they do really different things and they also give me a really different look. The second wardrobe essential to invest in for autumn is a really great pair of boots and I actually went a little bit boot mad in November, December of last year and one of the pairs of boots that I picked up were a pair of over the knee boots which I am so late to the game you do not need to remind me but I do think this is a trend that is very enduring and it's something I see come back every single year. So I actually ended up grabbing one of those pairs of Stuart Weitzman over the knee boots. I got these for an absolute steal which is why I decided to go for them. Uh, they're still available actually by the Artnet so I'm going to link them down below in case you guys want to check them out but I just think these look so chic over a pair of skinny jeans that's sort of my preferred way to wear them just because my legs are sort of shorter however if you do have really long legs these look amazing with a mini skirt too with just a little peak of thigh showing so what I like about these is the fact that they add an additional layer of warmth to your outfit without actually having to go full hog with all of the layers like you guys will have seen in my winter layering video that I was putting thermals on underneath my jeans I think with these especially when it's not too cold Hold, these are kind of perfect they just give you that little bit of extra warmth the second pair of boots that I think is worth having in your wardrobe especially come autumn time is a great pair of ankle boots and I thought I'd just highlight two pairs that I absolutely love the first pair are these ones from Loaf Randall and again you guys probably won't have seen these because I picked them up in early December and they're sort of a a uh, very rich brown shade. I really like the fact that these are quite narrow around the ankle and they're really flattering and these look great with jeans uh, and I like the fact that they come up a little bit higher on the leg and that's something I'm really gravitating towards now that I am starting to wear straight leg jeans a lot more because I think it looks really chic when you've got that little bit of boot that is just tucked in underneath the denim. So that's the first pair of ankle boots. The second pair, again a lighter pair of boots which I'm really, really digging this for uh, this year. I'm loving the whole neutrals trend. They are these ones here from Everlane, and these are in a, a patent leather, and they've got a really nice shine to them. Uh, they've got a sort of a pebbled effect to the leather as well, which looks very, very cool. And these kind of cut off a little bit lower, I think, than the Lo Florandel ones, and they aren't as fitted toward around the ankle. So I like these with some gray socks peeking out of them. I just think that looks very cool, and they look great with a pair of sort of bone or creamy colored trousers as well. Now, let's keep it to accessories, and you guys probably know I tend to reach for really neutral outfits. I don't go for anything that is too crazy or too bold. So what I like to do is I like to make a statement with my accessories. In particular, I think a statement making bag is a really great thing to have in your autumn wardrobe especially as we're starting to layer up more and maybe our outfits aren't quite as exciting because we're wearing just a big roll neck sweater with jeans or something like that every single day so a couple of the bags that I really like to reach for which I think are just a little bit more different a bit more special uh, out of everything that I have is this little mini Pashley bag this one is from Philip Lim and unfortunately this color which is sort of a mushroom shade is no longer available but there's a very similar one which I've spotted for this season which I'll drop in the description box but I just think this is a really sweet bag it actually does hold quite a bit and I have done a full review on this bag if you would like to watch that if you're curious about it I'm gonna 
pop it up here for you guys so you can go have a watch. So that's the first one. The second one is a different color for me. It's actually a color I really love and would love to introduce into my wardrobe more this year. And it is this baguette style bag from LM. I want to say I've had this bag for about six months now and I find whenever I wear it with an outfit, especially one that's got a lot of darker tones to it, it just looks very striking and really pops. And I think particularly this gold buckle detail is what makes it really, really special. This next item was a major trend for 2018. It's definitely something I still see myself wanting to wear a lot for 2019 uh, because I see it's a little bit of a finishing piece for an outfit. It really helps you tie in an entire look. And honestly, it was such a wardrobe staple for me, especially in my early 20s, and I don't know what what stopped me wearing them. It's an oversized blazer or just a really nice structured blazer in general. So I've got two here that I wanted to show you guys, different price points and slightly different fits as well. So the first one is from Everlane and this is just a really nice herringbone wool blazer. This is an oversized, very manly, kind of masculine boyish fit, which I like and I think it pairs really nicely with something that's a little bit more feminine on the bottom, something that's a bit more fitted. It also works really well with a straight leg jean as well, which you guys know I'm very much getting into. I love the color as well because it is so dark. It goes with absolutely everything. The pattern on it is very subtle and it's quite lightweight as well. So this isn't one that you would want to be wearing on its own in the deep of winter if you live somewhere really cold. But for me here in Sydney, I find that this is the perfect jacket for the transitional months. The second one I wanted to mention is a high street one and it is from H&M. You guys have seen me talk about this so many times, but the thing that I love about this is the fact that one, I bought it on the high street. Two, it is really good quality. It's fully lined and it's actually got a really nice shape to it. So it's one thing that I say a lot is that the high street does tailoring very well and you can find great jackets like this for a really reasonable price tag. I don't think I paid more than $80 for this. So uh, a really, really good buy and you can always change out the buttons if you want it to look a little bit more expensive. But this is one that, again, I really like with my minimal outfits. The fact that it's got a little bit of a print to it really helps to elevate my look a bit and make it seem a bit more special than it is a little bit less basic. And yeah, it's just one that I know I'm going to be wearing a lot. And there are so many similar options to this. It really doesn't seem to be dying this whole checked blazer trend, which I'm not mad about at all. The final piece of outerwear I wanted to mention is one that I was finally able to reinvest in last year and it is a really good leather jacket. Now I have had my eye on this for a good, I'm going to say eight months before I finally bit the bullet. I was waiting for the Black Friday sales to buy this from All Saints and I am so pleased with it. The leather is really nice and buttery soft but the reason why I wanted to include this is because again I find that this is such a stable piece for me especially once it gets cooler and I do think it's worth spending a little bit more money on something that you are going to wear again and again and again. This pairs really perfectly with your summer dresses. It's something I like to draw on over the top, which helps to which helps to increase the longevity of those summery pieces and make them work a little bit more for autumn. And I really like that juxtaposition of something that's very feminine with something that's quite edgy and a bit hard. Uh, but I also really like how this works just with denim as well or with a skirt or something like that. So this is definitely something that I know I wear a lot. And I think if this is a piece that is part of your daily uniform, then it is definitely worth spending a little bit more and getting something that is really nice quality that you're going to have for years. Now I mentioned denim a few times and you guys know 2018 was the year of denim for me. I really tried different silhouettes out, I really tried different washes and I just tried lots of different brands. I feel like I found a lot of brands and styles that I liked and, and I kind of figured out what worked for me. I still feel like I've got a lot of discovery to do and as these are such a staple in so many of our wardrobes I wanted to highlight three pairs that I personally think are worth having in your closet especially as it starts to get cool. So the first style is a classic straight leg high waisted skinny jean. Now you guys know I love these. If you have a shorter torso then maybe you might like to go for a mid rise that might suit you a little bit better but personally I go for a mid to high rise. Uh, the ones that I want to show you guys today are my redone ones which I love. They're still going strong. They're a really nice sturdy denim. I love the whole um, ethos behind redone. Basically it's Levi's that have been reworked to fit you perfectly because it can be really hard to uh, find vintage Levi's that are the right size for you and trust me when I say I am on that mission. Uh, I love the frayed edge hem on these as well. So that is the first pair and I find that these look really great when I want to wear an oversized sweater because it really helps to balance out the outfit with these being a little slimmer on my bottom half. The second type is a pair of white jeans. Now I am loving the whole neutrals trend right now. It is 100% up my street and it's something I think you guys is going to be seeing me wear a lot 
throughout the cooler months. And I am on the hunt for a new pair of high-waisted white skinny jeans. I think I've, I think I've found some, but uh, at the moment I am without. So the pair I thought I'd show you guys are my straight leg cheekies from Everlane. These are more of a bone. They aren't a crisp white, which I actually think is better. It means they're going to show up do it a little bit less. Obviously, you still need to be quite careful with these. I have spilled coffee all over them on my way to work one morning, and uh, it was too late for me to go home and change, so I just had to make it do it happens to the best of us uh, but I love these and I think they look really really great with a nice neutral camel colored sweater or something like that and that's kind of my favorite way to wear these I think works really well I do love a whole white on white outfit as well it can look really fresh particularly when it's cool and then obviously the last pair that I wanted to mention which I kind of alluded to earlier is a great straight leg jean and the ones I have here are from Levi's these are their wedgie straight fit jean I believe yeah wedgie straight and I've got these in kind of a washed black denim and these again have that distressed hem. I actually cut these myself shorter because I found that the original length was a bit too long for me. I like them to be a little bit above my ankle just because that's the most flattering point on my figure. And anything longer I find it can make my legs look really wide which is not really I think the look that you're going for. You are wearing a straight leg jean. And I really like wearing these with something simple like a black fitted turtleneck on top because again it's all about the balance so you've got something that's a little bit wider on your bottom half so going for a fitted top on your upper body looks really really chic with those and then the last thing i want to mention is an oversized sweater so i am not going to be predictable and show you guys my joseph sweater which you will already know is one of the best investments that i made in 2018 it's something i'm so glad that i finally bought and actually it's a huge coincidence because i had said this picture of sarah donson from harper and harley wearing this white sweater with vintage levi's Turns out it was that Joseph sweater that I bought and I didn't click until maybe a week ago, so uh, quite funny how that happened. Uh, so I thought I'd show you guys uh, two sweaters that are a bit more in the neutral camp. So the first one I've got here, you guys will, will be familiar with this one, it's from Stella McCartney and it's just a really nice pink roll neck sweater. I love this and it actually has these turn ups on the ends of these sleeves which I've unpicked so that I can wear it so that it's got slightly flared sleeves which I think gives it a really fun element it's a little bit different and then the neckline here rolls up and it's just a really nice thick roll neck this is super cozy what I like about it is that it is really warm but it doesn't seem too thick it's not too bulky to tuck into jeans and things like that then the second one I'm going to show you guys you may have seen it on my blog I don't think I actually wore it last year it was in another cupboard and I rediscovered it when I was filming my entire wardrobe and it is this one here from frame so this is a really beautiful fawn colored kind of mock neck sweater and it's really boxy fit through the body and it's really high quality like this is just dreamy soft it's probably one of the softest sweaters I own aside from the cashmere to sell with love cardigan that I've got and again I love how this looks tucked into something high-waisted particularly I just think it's really cozy warm it's sort of a very easy piece to gravitate towards when it is colder you don't really have to think too much about it either uh, definitely perfect for more casual outfits I do think you can wear an oversized sweater to the office but you just have to be really careful about how you're styling it so those are the seven autumn wardrobe essentials that I do think is worth investing in. I'd love to know what you also like to invest in for the colder months or if you're in the northern hemisphere what you like to invest in this spring. Thank you again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new here. Like this video if you enjoyed it and I will see you guys next time with a brand new video. See you soon. Bye!